then two like so he's building two cement walls, but firewood is sixty percent of the wall. So he saves the cement costs of sixty percent, and he's using the the wood and to create two walls with an insulating layer in the middle. He puts like wood duff or perlite or rice hulls in the middle, and so now he's created. He's, safe, he's not even creating a, a cement wall that's totally thick either. So he's saving money that way. He's actually filling it with an insulator. So he's got two cement walls with the, the cordwood masonry, keeping the, the cordwood, keeping the walls together and uh, the structure integral with an insulating layer in the middle. And now you've created a, a structure with, 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 with incorporating natural materials within a non-natural material, which is concrete, with an insulating layer, which is super energy efficient and really easy to build and you know cheap. Um, there are other techniques. There are Ehler structures, which is like, you know, this is kind of like a hippie kind of structure. If you're really super eco-conscious, the Ehler structure may appeal to you. It's like, just uses like wood and a sheet of plastic for the, for the roofing, but the, the, the plastic and the nails and the, the fasteners are like the only manufactured equipment you use. Like everything else is just trees and rough cut hewn lumber and, you know, you can do it all yourself. You don't need to even, you even need a mill, but a mill will help. Um, it's it's all uses round wood, so you don't need. That's why you don't need a mill because you're using round wood for everything. And it's a pretty interesting idea. He, he actually insets it into a hill so that the hill actually becomes part of the thermal mass. He uh, faces it uphill to create a, a drainage, and it looks like a hobbit house. If you've ever seen like a, you know if you think about like a hobbit house, Lord of the Rings, this is kind of the idea. It's almost like a house that looks like a hill, and on one side of the house, it's got all these windows, a whole wall of windows to bring in all this light, so it's not a cave. And it's super energy efficient because it's only got one part of the house is exposed, you know, to the outside. Normally you have a house, you have four walls and a roof. And so you're heating the house and you're losing heat out of all four walls and the roof. He puts on a super thick roof with earth and he grows grass on it. So in the summertime, it actually provides evaporative cooling. The earth also protects from hail or damage or anything else like that. It protects the, the plastic that's underneath there from light so it never breaks down. Plastic not exposed to UV will last forever. Um, he's built these things since seven, 1970 and he hasn't had any problems with the plastic underneath the ground if it's not exposed to sunlight. And that, that, ther that creates a, a thermal layer. Rob Roy would say, hey, why? He's a little bit less eco-conscious, still eco-conscious, but uh, he's like, why not add a two inch foam blue board of Dow you know, manufactured foam here. Well, that would give you even more insulation. But uh, yeah, so a house it loses energy from all these four walls and the roof. If you put that house in the ground or put ground up against it, now you're only losing energy from the from the roof and the one the, what you expose. And so you've just kind of you just kind of create a nice warm blanket for yourself all around your house. And, and it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice gentle heat too. You talked about wood stoves before. Who brought the wood stoves? My husband. Did. Okay, so. There's a, th there's, a, there's a technique called a rocket mass heater, which is like this beautiful technology that they're, they've discovered, like Yanto Evans kind of played with it and has been perfecting it, and more people have picked it up and played with it. But it's like, you take a metal barrel, you create a super insulated chimney, and then you use fire brick to create a, uh, like a burn tunnel. And so you put your, it doesn't use wood, no chopping wood. You use sticks that you collect. You put the sticks in with a little bit of newspaper, you fire it up. As soon as this gets, as soon as this fire brick gets hot, you have two chimneys: the super insulated chimney inside a metal inside a metal barrel upside down, and then you have this little tiny fire brick chimney. Well, this chimney is much higher, so when the chimneys compete for draw, this chimney wins because it's higher. It has that more suction. So this chimney begins to suck air from your from the inside of your house up the chimney, and then it goes to the metal barrel where the air cools. It naturally drops, and then you you make this go through some kind of thermal mass. Usually it's clay. You just take the dirt. From your from your land, if it has a high clay content, and you put it on top of this uh, the uh, the fire chimney that you normally do, and most people will like make these into beautiful benches or couches, and they'll put cushions on cushions on them, and so you'll have this like clay bench, and it'll and you uh, you finish it with linseed oil and make it look really nice and uh, natural, and even if you get it wet, the clay won't come off because the linseed keeps it all preserved, and this bench gets nice and warm, but it's a nice warm gentle heat. It's not like a wood stove where like you get too close, and you're like, woo, I'm getting a little warm. This barrel does do that. The barrel does get super warm, but after the fire goes out, all that heat has been stored, like it's been banked in that thermal mass. And when you lay on that, and you lay on that couch, it's just like you're sitting on a nice warm bed. And so you know, it's like you know, if you if you have, if it's see that this like nice, cool, gentle, passive heat that just kind of gently radiates. And if you make that thermal mass like the size of a picnic table, it'll radiate all night. Um, you know, you, there's a, I know one guy who's in Idaho who, uh, on the forums, he built one of these, and he heats his house 
with nothing but junk mail. He orders catalogs online, he's <laughs> delivered for free, and that's what he burns in his rocket mass heater to heat his house. Um, most, most people's experience is that for basically once a week they go into the woods and they collect this big giant, you know, like a wheelbarrow load of sticks, and that's what heats their house for the week. So no more chopping, no more working hard, you just break the sticks, burn them up, you know, or burn the paper, or whatever you want to do, and this is like, you know, and you can cook on top of the barrel, just like a wood stove would. The barrel does break down like every like 10 or 20 years, or every 10 or 20 years they replace the barrel. But even if the chimney breaks down, if you've got all that clay around it, so the metal's gone, but the whole, as, long as, the, as long as you're still getting draft, you're still good. And uh, what, what is this called? I'm trying to find on here. Rocket mass heater. Rocket mass heater. It's on page three. Okay. Yep, all right, yep I found it. Thank okay. you. I, I want to make sure that my husband looks at that and researches it. Yeah, yeah. Is this the one that doesn't spend a lot of time hauling wood? Hey, yes. <laughs> Built, if, you, if you're really good at building these, and you put a, an added, if you know what you're doing, an adequately long uh, like a ventilation system, you can actually put your face in the exhaust, and it, it's, there's, you don't smell any smoke. Like all, you, all it is is water vapor and CO2 at that point, because it's, it's actually like burned all the carbon of all the smoke, all the impurities. It, it's just, it's, it's got it all, you know. Such a beautiful thing. Uh, these things do take. I mean, like it might take uh, a beginner like a week or two to put one together, maybe. Um, that's nothing compared to how long it takes you to stack 12 oh, quart of wood. You can pay $1,000 for a wood stove, right? You know what I mean? And this thing is so much more efficient and less work overall, you know? And the maintenance cost might, be, might even be less. Um, other than like that, that barrel cost, the barrel might, you might be able to get those for $50, some, some brick. Probably for the cost of 500 bucks, you could probably build one of these things. Um, and it, it'll last for an awful it's long time. It's a huge savings. We spent yeah. about five grand to have our wood stove installed and oh, yeah, everything yeah, yeah. and all the tile you put up yeah. around it. And yeah. Absolutely. That's a huge savings. Huge savings. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But yeah, so like the, the, inside, the, inside that couch, inside that bench, is all this like piping that's kind of going along and eventually exits out of the house. But yeah, if, you, if it gets hot, if it, when, it, when that chimney gets super, that super insulated chimney gets hot, the heat is so extreme that it just breaks all that carbon off. It uses all that energy. Wood stoves often have an efficiency rating. An efficiency, rate, efficiency rating, I guess, is based off what the most efficient wood stove is. So if the most efficient wood stove that's ever been made would be like 99%, and every other wood stove is compared to that. But like their actual efficiency is like 50% or less. You know, So you're really not getting that full thing like you would with a rocket stove. Uh, I think even a rocket mass heater is going to be... You're probably looking at like 98%. I'm sure you're losing some heat. Uh, you need at least some heat if you're actually making it exit. That's how you're, that's how you're making the, the ventilate out, is by using the idea of a natural heat draft. And so you are losing some energy just to make it go away, but you certainly don't want smoke in your house. They will smoke up originally when they're not too warm. If, you're, if, they're, if they're cold, fired for the first time, you'll get a little smoke in your house. But as soon as that heats up, no problem. You do with the wood stove, too. Yeah. I talk about the passive solar, the annualized thermal inertia. Yeah, so like, this is, these are ways where you get pretty much that energy cost down to zero. Again, like when you get that, when you get that save, when you get to the point where you're, you have a, uh, your living expense gets down to zero, you can retire now. You don't need anybody. And, and this is, you don't need the monopolized energy system. You don't need the, the national gas company, which has a state monopoly anymore. You've like withdrawn yourself from that system. You don't need to participate in them anymore. If you can build your house out of money, out of pocket, by building material, mater building materials like as you go, like so this week, I don't, like I have just enough to build what I want this week. And next week, I'll go buy the building materials I need next that week. And so now, as building material costs rise, it's almost like the material cost, the, the building cost, the building materials were like an investment. Because these things, as these things go up, it's almost like that, uh, that increase in price was an investment you were making. And if you could build it in time, by yourself, you're saving that money with these natural materials, you're now, you don't need a mortgage. You don't need to participate in like, God, uh, I just want to talk about mortgage, mortgages again for a second. Uh, people don't, a lot of people don't realize it, but even with low interest rates, a 30-year mortgage, you're paying three times the cost of your house. You know, a, a house that's 100 grand, you're paying the bank over the course of 30 years 300 grand for that, for the privilege of that, that money. You know, wouldn't it be better if you could like just kind of escape all that? If you could have that 200 grand still in your pocket, and you could walk away with it. You know, build a house yourself for 100 grand. Um, I, I hate to sure. interrupting and interjecting, but there's some great life lessons for my husband's family. Even uh, a brother had bought property for cheap and put a mobile home on it and then basically built around it and then removed the roof and all the side walls because okay. he, he didn't get a building permit because he was simply remodeling right, a yeah, modular remodeling. home. There is like one wall 
and the flooring and some yeah. of the plumbing left, yeah. but the rest of this huge, beautiful home he built himself yeah. uh, ar around it, but kind of beat some of the so-called codes yeah, okay. by simply by doing a remodel Interesting. and wow. has zero mortgage, yeah. zero yeah. mortgage, yeah. works once a week. Yeah. Uh, and and homeschools their children and gardens and lives yeah. the way they want to. Yeah. When you got that mortgage, you got a bill that you got you got to pay, and that means you got to work to pay that bill, and then you're 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 stuck in a system where like I, I you know your your choices are lower. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh. Oh. So yeah. So I talked about okay. Talked about the alien structure, the earth bag. We talked about. Uh, Nice. Straw bale. Straw bale, if you like more conventional homes, if you don't want to live in a hobbit house, you're like, I kind of want my house to look kind of like what I'm used to, straw bale is a pretty cool technique. It's a stick frame house, but instead of putting like a lot of uh, uh, manufactured insulation, just add straw bales to it. And so now you have these super thick walls, which uh, it just slows down the energy transfer, and you just get a super insulated house. You do still need to make sure you got plenty of ventilation and stuff like that, but you can make you can make these things look, you can put drywall up against that and just do it like, like you would with a, a normal house or whatever you want. But it would look like a normal house if you're not comfortable with something that looks a little more eco, a little more hippie, something like that. You just want, you want to look like your neighbors, straw bales are a great way to go. And you know, you, you've you saved yourself the money of all that expense of, uh, of that stuff. A lot of people don't feel like they can build their own house. And that's why Rob Roy says, go and build a shack first. If you want to, if you want to build a straw bale house, go build a straw bale shack. Make all your mistakes. You know what I mean? Like, if the shack collapses, what's the big deal? You, you've spent 500 bucks on it. You know what I mean? Like, that's an educational expense, you know? But he goes, he goes don't worry about it. He goes, in his, he's, got, he's been talking to lots of people, and he's like, no one fell, fell on their face. No one fell on their ass. It was like the one guy with the entrepreneurial side. He goes, it's kind of a myth. Like, if you just keep at it, you know, you, you might have a setback. You might trip. You might stumble. But you can do it. I mean, if you're able-bodied, um, there was a, I, I saw a YouTube video of a, of a woman who was 50 years old, she was overweight, and she built herself her own log cabin. We can do these things. It is possible if we have the drive, you've got it if you really, really want it. Um, we talk about permaculture for a little bit, because it's about, it goes into the food. There are, I, I like permaculture, but I want, I, I like to expand a little bit bigger. It is possible for one person to live off a quarter acre. You know, it does take, it does take some knowledge, takes some, like, uh, some art, um, but, and it does take a little bit of time, too, to develop the systems that will produce that efficiently. But it is possible, and if even if you get, in the beginning you're just gardening, and that's 50% of your household food, you say 50%, and if, and if you're living mortgage-free and energy-free, and you have, like, you know, an internet, ca if, you're, if you're commuting electronically, you know, if, if you only have 50% savings on the food, that's still a pretty good thing. But there are things like food forests, where people are, uh, I mean, these are this is an ancient technique. I guess in Babylon they had, they had this. But like they, they plant, oh no, no, it's actually, uh, it's in the Middle East, I want to say in Israel somewhere, there's a this food forest that actually is still producing, the, the food forest is 2,000 years old, and it's still producing food, and no one's maintained it for, you know, over 1,500 years. Oh, I saw that video. Yeah. Uh -huh. So they're just going to plant trees, and first what they do is they plant these nitrogen-fixing trees, which are like these pioneer trees, and as these grow up, then they plant the fruit trees. And the, the, the nitrogen-fixing trees are like the, are very aggressive pioneer trees, but they don't grow very high. Their strategy is to, to grow fast and grow smaller and, and compete quick, be that kind of a, that entrepreneur to get to the market fast. And then the, the fruit trees are a little bit bigger. They can shade them out, and they kind of have a low, a slow and a slow grow kind of investment strategy biologically. And uh, so eventually, you get to this point where like you don't have, need to have you're not even planting every year for a garden. And then you get you get fruit and nuts and beans and stuff from the food forest. You can grow vines up the trees that are producing things that, that you might want. Pawpaws yeah, and grapes. It's like 1,500 years this thing is going on. They, Absolutely. Uh, it's just food. Yeah. And if, if, <laughs> you have a, if, you, if you have all this fruit, like I don't want to eat that much fruit, put up a roadside stand. Make a little income. You know what I mean? Feed it to your chickens. If you got a waste product, you know, you, you can. You, if, you, if you want livestock, you can do that that, that, that way. Um, yeah, food well, forest. Yeah, they, uh, they had, uh, they got, uh, Growing on the bottom. Yeah, the herbaceous layer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so they're, they're growing in like seven dimensions. They're growing a root layer, an herbaceous layer, a ground cover, vining, uh, small shrubs, large trees. They're just trying to put all these systems together. They're trying to model an ecological, a natural system, but produce that system in a way that produces stuff for humans. And that's kind of the idea of a food forest. It's a, but it's a, it is a long term project. You're like, if you start a food forest today, you're probably not going to get a lot of 
production of that for five years. Like that's when the fruit starts to come up. Um, and then, but by 20 years, you've got more food than you know what to do with. And so that's kind of like the investment. Do you, you know, do you want to make that kind of a, that kind of investment now, or you want to pay kind of a little bit a long term? Um, Hugo culture is this interesting technique that's been around for a couple decades now, and probably there's probably other ancient cultures that have that have done this, and we just don't know about. But they just put they put wood like they could chop down a tree and then shovel dirt on top of it. And what that does is that that tree rots so much faster under the ground in those moist conditions. And then that tree, when it rots, it becomes like a giant sponge. Like you ever step on a, on a uh, rotten tree in the woods and like just collapse under your foot? Mm -hmm. If you ever, ever picked it up and squeezed it, like you can squeeze water out of that wood. It's just all, all sorts of rotten. Well, now you don't need to water your plants. You don't need irrigation. If you, if, you put those, if you put that wood under the soil and plant on top of it, in three years that wood is broken down, begins to break down, and it's not only, not only a sponge that holds water, but it's releasing the nutrients. All the nutrients that tree has accumulated all the course of its years of its life are then been re-released into your vegetables. So these beds can last for like 5 to 10 to 30, 20 years, depending on how big the wood is you put in it. And you've eliminated uh, any kind of expense and need for irrigation, um, and you've eliminated the, uh, the, uh, the need to fertilize because the, the wood is doing that for you. And permaculture gets a lot into like you know planting uh, clover and next, other nitrogen fixers that are herbaceous to kind of like be kind of like companion plant and this kind of thing. And uh, but I just wanted I wanted to express the possibilities that with a little bit of uh, know-how and a little bit of experimentation, anybody can grow a lot of food. You know it, it is it is a possible thing. A lot of people have done it, um, and uh, it's it's there and available. There are these things, the earthworks. I'll, I'll talk about like they're, 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 what they're doing is they're creating swales, which is like a ditch on a contour. So if I have a hill that's kind of sloping down like this, they'll take like an earth moving machine and they'll create a ditch and they'll put the, they'll shovel the dirt downhill a little bit. So what it creates is like this bump. The, the, if it rains, the water comes down. It fill, instead of going downhill and just leaving your property, it hits your ditch and then goes horizontal. And then it just slows the water down and it soaks it in. And if you've got a ditch below that, then the water that escapes below that ditch goes into the next ditch and just slows down again. And by slowing the water down, you've limit, you've using, you're just using gravity and rain to naturally irrigate your land. And if you put the hugel cultures in those mounds, then you know you've got uh, you know the, a perfect system. And some people also these things also collect a lot of water. Right? In, in this climate, you would actually have ponds on either side of this. And so what a lot of people do is they'll have a swale, and they'll have the swale run into a pond, and then they'll have that.